Hello everyone, Silent here and welcome back to another mega tutorial. Today I'll be showing you possibly the best raid farm that you've seen yet on Bedrock Edition. This is a 24 stacked raid farm, meaning that there are 24 villages and you can have up to 24 raids going at a single time. This is basically 24 times better than any standard raid farm that you might be building. This raid farm produces over 20,000 emeralds per hour and produces tens of thousands of other items per hour as well. With this farm, you're going to have a lifetime supply of emeralds, totems, and enchanted books, along with a lot of other loot this is a pretty ultimate raid farm, and if you don't feel like building a full 24 stacked, I have good news for you. You can start off with just a single village, and then you can add more villages as you like. So if you want to just have like two villages, or if you want to have 10, or 15, or 20, or the full 24, you can do that. You don't need to go full out the rest of the farm structure is actually surprisingly simple, and even though it is spread out, it's still a really easy thing to build. This raid farm also gives you a ton of experience as well. I got 80 levels from a pretty short amount of AFK time. A standard one village raid farm is typically equivalent to a double mob spawner, so if you want to scale that up, uh, this might be equal to 48 mob spawners worth of experience, which is just like a lot. That sounds like way too much. I don't know how much experience it it actually gives you. I'm gaining a lot of experience even though the XP orbs are invisible. That is due to a bug, but this thing is super fast. With this farm, you're going to be farming five different mobs in mass. That includes the pillagers, the vindicators, evokers, witches, and ravagers. So you're going to be getting a lot of all of these different items. As you can see, it is a lot of goodies. From the pillagers, you can get any enchanted book in the game, including mending. You can get enchanted iron, tools, and weapons, crossbows, arrows, and the banners. From the vindicators, you can get emeralds, iron tools, and weapons, along with the iron armor. And and from the evokers, you're going to be getting a lot of totems of a dying and a lot of emeralds. The witches drop these seven different items right here, so you get quite a number of those with this farm. And from the ravagers, you're also going to be getting a lot of pretty useless saddles too. Just so you have the full title of this farm and you understand its power, it is a fully automatic 24 stacked split density sim 4 single player raid farm that produces over 20,000 emeralds an hour with four outposts spawn spots a 31 trident killer and you don't even need to spawn proof the area it also applies looting three to every single mob that it kills since a lot of that might have gone over your head let me just give you a couple of definitions for all of that spaghetti terms that i just threw out there so this thing is fully automatic meaning that once you flick that lever you can go full afk you don't need to do anything you can come back hours later and the system is still going to be running just fine it is split density so that means that those raiders are far enough away from this pillager outpost that they're not going to affect it because the pillagers that spawn as part of a raid will actually prevent you from getting more pillagers at your pillager outpost so in order to get enough bad omen we had to make this farm split density which is really silly this is a sim 4 design meaning that all of the mobs are within 44 blocks blocks of the player at all times basically meaning that that pillager outpost is super close to our afk spot and the kill chamber is split density while also being close enough to not despawn the raiders this is a stacked raid farm, so that means that each one of these beds represents a different village, and we have stacked them together in a very small area. As you can see, it's kind of like a triple layer sandwich. So we can start a raid in every single one of these villages, meaning that we can have 24 raids going at once, producing up to 20,000 emeralds per hour. This pillager outpost has four spawn spots, giving us the maximum amount of pillagers and bad omen that we can get. We need all the bad omen possible just to start a raid in every village. This is a 31 trident killer, meaning that we literally have a 31 block long trident killer just to kill everything fast enough. And this farm also doesn't need any spawn proofing either. You will need to flatten the area to prevent raiders from spawning on the ground, but you don't need to put down slabs or leaves or torches or anything like that to spawn proof the area. This entire raid farm was designed, built, and tested by Pico Nico. He spent a couple of weeks designing this thing, and it is an absolute beast of a farm. So full credit goes to Pico Nico. Show him some love in the comment section down below, because this is entirely his, and it is just so amazing. You might recognize his name because I've shown 
showcased several of his other builds here on the channel in the past. Typically stacked village things, because he's just a mastermind behind this kind of tech for Bedrock Edition. If you think this farm took a long time to design, you are absolutely correct. Pico Nico was literally working on this for weeks and weeks, and the amount of design iterations is absolutely crazy. Huge props once again to Pico Nico for designing this absolute beast of a raid farm. That being said, if you are a true mad lad, you can actually expand this to be a 48 stacked raid farm. You heard that right, 48 villages in one. However, the issue with this is that you don't actually get enough bad omen in order to provide a raid to every village so there is a severe diminishing returns if you wanted to build a 48 village raid farm or even more than this then you're going to need more than one outpost worth of bad omen a single outpost would give you enough for a 24 stacked raid farm but if you want more villages than that you're going to need a secondary outpost both of those will need four spawning spots and the player who is afk at the farm will need to throw all the tridents for the trident killers at both of those pillager outposts this of course means that you would need a secondary player to afk at the other outpost so they'd be getting bad omen from this outpost and another one as well which sounds kind of crazy but it might just work so if you are an absolute mad lad you might be able to build yourself a 48 village raid farm and that would probably produce somewhere in the neighborhood of like 40,000 emeralds per hour. This is a pretty unique style of farm because it doesn't start off going 100% speed. You have to start a raid in each of the 24 villages. So if you're starting at absolute zero in the first hour, you're going to get about 16,000 emeralds per hour. But once you get the farm up to speed and you get 24 raids going, it's going to start producing about 20,000 emeralds per hour. So it takes a little while to get up to speed. So let's take Take a look at how exactly this farm works shall we it pretty much operates like a normal raid farm but with a couple extra steps so this right here is actually the pillager outpost you can see only the bottom of it is left and notably this one has four spawn spots which is going to be giving us ample pillagers the trident killers are up here in the air and this is going to be what's giving us a bad omen constantly heading up a little bit you can see that we have the afk platform and this is the only place where the player ever is these are the detached Detectors for when a raid is going so whenever a villager is ringing this bell that's going to send you off to the next village that way you can summon a raid and every one of these automatically and while you are afk in a safe minecart just think of this as a little bit of a roller coaster that has little pit stops at every village and then you sit at that village until you get bad omen and then you move on to the next village until you have summoned a raid in every single one of these the villagers are on the other side of this so so the villagers are right here and they are linked to their beds and as you can see this is color coded so this villager's got a black bed and that goes to this observer right here and that's essentially it this is just our villager containment area the village is actually stretched out very very far all the way to that side over here that way our raids actually spawn on this platform this is the killing platform for all of the raiders and it is super duper incredibly simple Anything that comes in here activates the tripwire hook and that will get killed by the trident killers that we have in here. All the items and experience get pushed into this water stream right here and then they fall all the way down into the ground where the raiders cannot spawn. From here you can customize a storage system. Basically we have some hopper mine carts and I'm splitting those into different water streams. You can have a sorting system going off of each of these water streams. That way your sorting system doesn't get overflown with items. Regardless I'll probably need to do another tutorial simply on the storage system from here all the experience is pushed up to the afk platform that way you can actually get some experience from this farm so yes it's a very very large farm and it takes up a lot of area especially if you include those workstations over there but as you can tell each one of these individual pieces is really really easy to build like none of it's actually that complicated so hopefully if you have any anxiety about this build you can be relieved knowing that the actual structure of the raid farm is incredibly easy to build 
And let's hop into the tutorial, shall we? For your convenience, there is a full materials list down in the description of the video. That way you know everything you need to build this with. And we're also going to be having a couple of world downloads in the description as well. One is for the complete 24 stacked raid farm. One is for the 48 stacked raid farm. So yeah, you get to play around with both of these. And those downloads are on my website, silentwhisperer.com, where all of my world downloads are hosted. The first step of this project is to find yourself a good pillager output. And now the first thing that you want to do is to take a look at the terrain around it like this one is just terrible You got mountains and valleys and cliffs Oh my you want to find one that's ideally in a nice flat area that way you don't have raids spawning on these hills Basically, you're going to need to flatten the area So the flatter it is the better don't choose one that's in the middle of like a mountain or something Secondly the pillager outpost has to have four spawning spots do not build this with any other outpost You're just gonna be wasting your time you need all four of those spawn spots in order to get enough bad omen to actually start enough raids and to get the full rates of this farm to find your spawn spots basically what you want to do is knock out all the pillars and just kind of flatten the whole upper area and then you want to make a platform going five or six blocks out above around the entire upper part of the pillager outpost and then basically just fill in a whole bunch of glass panes at that layer and then you just need to wait for some pillagers to spawn they'll be trapped between these glass panes and that will tell you where your spawn spots are at and how many you have of course i would recommend doing this in a creative mode on a copy of your world because this could take a very long time and you're likely gonna have to travel to multiple outposts in order to find one that has a four spawn spot so this pillager outpost only has one spawn spot in the standard location and uh that's basically all there is to it you're not going to get very many raids out of this outpost so it's not worth using this one once you have an outpost with four spawn spots you can break all the glass panes around the pillagers as you can see they are stuck in there and now if you find the northwest direction using either a sunflower or a locator map you can place in your marker block for the actual spawn spot so these guys spawn on the northwest corners of blocks meaning that the block to the southeast is actually going to be the spawning location so that is our spawning block and we're going to be using that for our trident killers and this is basically what it should look like when you have four different spawn spots in your outpost you're going to get pillagers in four different locations and those locations are going to be basically in a square with one another once you found an outpost with four spawning spots you basically want to tear down the entire outpost and level it down to the very bottom floor so this is the floor of the very bottom of the outpost and we're going to cover that entire thing in leaves of course make sure that you know where all of your spawn spots are as you can see we have a pillar at each one of these spawn spots we're going to go up into the air by 17 blocks and make our trident killers up there so it's going to be 17 blocks above the floor of your outpost so this is one block right here that's two this is three four five six seven eight nine 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. This is our spawning spot, and you should have pillagers able to spawn right there. Basically, you want to go ahead and have one of these at each location, right above your little marker blocks that are down there. And once you have this marked out, we're going to go ahead and install our trident killers. All four of these trident killers are the same, so I'm going to show you how to build one of them, and then you just do that exact same thing at each four of your spawning spots. So these are directional. You need to be facing facing north when you start building this so basically we're just going to do a two by two of blocks right here and the pillagers are essentially going to spawn right here we're going to put another ring of blocks going all the way around this so that it is a four by four and then build up a three block tall wall on all of these sides going all the way around it we're going to install a little bit of a window right here using some glass blocks it's just so you can see in there and kind of troubleshoot this make sure it's working go ahead and place in a glass block directly above the spawning spot so the heads of the pillagers are right there we want a stair block right there and right there a torch right there and then we're going to fill in a roof of solid blocks put some leaves above all of this to finish it off we're going to break out these two blocks right here and then we're going to place in a temporary block down 
and this location right here. Place in a piece of sand and a cactus right there, and then you want a couple of leaves in this area. This is going to destroy all of the items and experience from this. This is optional. You could build a water stream, sort out the items, and send the experience to your AFK spot, but a cactus is much easier. We're going to break out these two windows right here and then place in a water bucket there and a water bucket there. That is going to push the pillagers into a trident killer that's going to be right here in this corner. Seal this up and now build this exact same thing at each one of your spawning locations. With all four cells built, we need to go ahead and go to each of these and break out these two blocks in line with your two leaves and then place in a piston facing inwards as the actual trident killer and also place a leaf above that. And now we need to wire up all of these things. So we're going to start with the back two over here. Place in a solid block there and then block down. Bring this across into a solid block like so. And then just run a line of solid blocks down the middle like so. And do the same thing over here. Just kind of connect these up until everything is wired. And then place down a whole bunch of redstone dust everywhere running into those blocks. All of this needs to have leaves above it to spawn proof it from raids. And now for the circuitry, we're going to go ahead and place in a little bit of a platform right here. You want a comparator on subtract mode going into a block, a repeater right here on one tick, and then a piece of redstone dust. Go ahead and place in a few blocks in these locations with a repeater right here. And then we're going to bring out a couple blocks right here. And we're going to leave this here for a while. Of course, all of this needs to be covered up with leaves, however. So this is the ultra basics of the farm. And currently, this is just a bad omen farm. But we need to expand this significantly and start marking out some chunks in order to install the rest of the build. The entire rest of the build needs to be chunk aligned and everything needs to be the exact distances that I say it is. Otherwise, you're going to have some issues. Things are going to break and you're going to have a really bad time. So make sure you're following the tutorial with a fine tooth comb from here on out and maybe even compare it to the world download just to make sure that everything is as it should be. So first things first, you need to figure out how to find chunk borders. A Foxy No Tails texture pack is of course the easiest way to do things, but if you don't know how to find chunk borders, check out the video in the upper right. So your pillager outpost is going to be in the first chunk of the build, so we're going to go ahead and mark that out on the borders right here with a layer of leaves. I'd recommend having two different types of leaves, that way you can easily differentiate between. So our first chunk border is marked out, and that's going to incorporate pretty much the entirety of the pillager outpost, and now we need to go west by another five chunks so get your favorite you know direction finder and your favorite chunk finder and start marking out some chunks going west and that is five chunks going to the west so i've marked out a little plus sign in this chunk because this is going to be our actual afk chunk and all of our villages need to be lined up within this chunk but we'll worry about that later so then we have four additional chunks going out in this direction and for this one we're actually going to put another chunk to the north and another one to the south our kill chamber is going to be directly above this one so go ahead and mark out another one to the north and another one to the south and now that we have all of this marked out, we need to go another five chunks to the west. That way we know where to put our workstations at. So you know the deal by now. Mark out another five chunks going straight towards the west. And that's what it should look like once you have it all done. So to recap, we have the chunk that your pillager outpost is in. One chunk to the west of that is the chunk where all of your afk platform is going to be and then we have a few more chunks to the west three chunks marked out for the killing chamber and then we go five more chunks to the west and that is where our workstations are going to be so that the village is actually stretched out enough and all the raiders spawn where they should and now we are ready to start building up the actual afk platform so go back to your first chunk and i just made a little bridge out at the very bottom layer of the outpost that we have left and i brought this over to the corner of the chunk that way we can pillar up so starting at this block you need to pillar up by 38 blocks up into the air past our trident killers all the way up to this level and then we're going to go to the left by three blocks and place in a solid block this is going to be kind of like the foundations of our entire afk platform place a piece of scaffolding on top of that and then bring it over by a few pieces to the right side until you line it up with that pillar and then we're just going to build out a little bit of a platform to stand on up here you can customize this to be however big you want however it needs to go at least three blocks beyond the actual scaffolding that way it's at least four wide we're also going to put a little bit of a railing around this thing and this is just going to give you a little bit of room up here to work on this thing 
thing and have some places to stand. So all of the villager tech and stacking of villages needs to be within this chunk right here. So these next 16 blocks is going to be very dense with our roller coaster. To install the control panel, all we need to do is place in a solid block right here for a piece of redstone dust, a solid block above that, dispenser to the left, and a redstone lamp to the right. Put yourself a lever right there and a piece of scaffolding right there. And then we're going to go down below this thing and place in a sticky piston facing downwards. Later on, we're going to hook that up into our trident killers to turn all of that stuff on. Now place in three leaves right here just to fill in that space. And we're going to double check our chunk borders. There should be a chunk border going right between this area. And this lamp should be right in the corner of the chunk. Basically, we're going to go down a block right here and a block over. And have a solid block right here. And then every other block, we're going to have a solid block. You should have eight solid blocks in total. These eight blocks are going to be the supports for a scaffolding platform. So the scaffolding platform is going to go all the way from this end to the other end. And it's basically going to be four blocks wide. So fill in that entire thing. And that's the scaffolding platform built in. It also needs to be extended two blocks to the right on the end over here. So next up, we're going to place in the color identifiers so that we can help keep track of all of our villages. This is optional. You don't need to use colored wool or concrete or anything. However, I would highly recommend it as it looks pretty cool and it also helps you keep track of all your villages. Either way, you need to place solid blocks in all of these locations. Once you have those in place, we're going to go ahead and place an observer facing outwards on each one of those blocks and a torch to its side. We also want to have a solid block at two blocks behind it like so. So do that for the entire row. Also place scaffolding between each of these solid blocks on the back sides. And this is what it should look like once you have all of that done. So now we're going to go ahead and install the first bits of the rail line. Starting at the left side, you want normal rail, powered rail right there, and then normal. And to this area, a powered rail right here. Loop that around like so. And basically, we're just going to be bringing it... Uh, round in this like zigzaggy shape all the way to the end so everywhere that you have a solid block we're gonna have a powered rail on the downward slope of that that's what the rails should look like once they are all installed and now loop around to the back sides and put a lever on each one of these solid blocks to power those rails and now we're going to place in a redstone torch on the back sides of all the observers and a trap door in the upper location in front of all of them, just like so. And these should flip up and down in these orientations. So this is what you need for eight villages worth of stacked raid farm. Of course, we want 24. So we're going to build another two layers just like this on top of here. So we're going to repeat the same steps that we did before. These solid blocks would go right on top of these observers. And then you would install your four block deep scaffold folding platform and really it's exactly the same as what I just showed you set up all the rails in the same orientations and then we're going to connect all the layers together and this is what you should have once all three layers are installed they're basically identical to one another so the minecart is going to start over here it's going to go across the bottom go up go across the top go up go back to the left and then it's going to loop back around and drop you down over here to restart that cycle to connect them together go to the bottom right corner and we need to place in two pieces of scaffolding right there stair step this up by a couple of layers like so and then we need to lower down these two pieces of scaffolding to this layer place in a piece of regular rail two pieces of powered two pieces of regular and two pieces of powered like so and then another scaffolding here and a regular rail now because this middle layer of rail is going in the opposite direction from left to right you may need to rebuild the tops and bottoms of these in order to get these to connect up correctly so basically you should come up here and then just go directly around here and start zigzagging it's kind of confusing to word it but yeah you might need to rebuild this middle layer is what i'm saying we're going to place in a glass block right here with a lever on it to power both of those sets of powered rails and put a leaf right there and now go to the left side of the middle and we're going to build out a platform that is too wide with with scaffolding in these areas. We're then going to bring out this rail line to here, put in three pieces of scaffolding right there, and then stair step this up by a couple of blocks. We need to put in ourselves three pieces of scaffolding in this area right here, and then three pieces of scaffolding in this area right here to continue up that staircase. Now connect all this rail together, so regular rail in these areas, powered rail right here, regular rail, powered rail, and regular, and then of course our glass block, 
lever and a leaf block right there. To restart the loop, go to the upper right corner and we need to install a new line of scaffolding behind this entire thing, going all the way to the right side. Once that scaffolding line is in place, we need to remove these levers and place them on the underside of these blocks. So simply break that piece of scaffolding and put the levers right there. Now go to this left side over here and place in a piece of rail there, powered rail there, loop this around to this side, put in a powered rail there and right there and there as well. And then another powered rail there continue this along all the way to the end and now we just need to place in a couple pieces of scaffolding right here and put in three pieces of regular rail we're actually going to break this block right here that way the minecart flies off the edge and goes straight down to our original starting position to make sure the minecart doesn't fly too far we're going to put in ourselves a little guide of leaf blocks and just continue that down a couple blocks that way you hit that guide and fall straight down if you want to grab yourself a minecart and ride the roller coaster just to make sure that everything is working as it should we and now we need to raid spawn proof this entire thing. So we're going to place a line of leaf blocks at this layer right here on each layer of the observers going up. And then on the inside layers, we're going to place in just a whole bunch of leaves at this layer right here going all the way across. So that's the bottom two sections spawn proofed and they got their little eyebrows on the observers as well. For the top layer, we're just going to put in a big old fat layer of leaves right here. That's going to be five blocks wide, spanning the entire length of this build. And now we're going to install an anti-phantom roof that way you don't spawn any phantoms while you're afk so go to this corner right here and we're just going to put a couple layers of blocks going out to cover up this roller coaster and basically anywhere that you're going to be standing or riding in a mine cart in this area should be covered up with this roof so like we're going to cover up our little bit of a platform over here this is also going to keep rain and lightning out as well anyway once you got your outline uh, go ahead and fill that in with solid blocks and then we need to put a leaf layer above it that's the entire afk platform done and now we're going to install the villager holding cells these are basically entirely made out of leaves so go to this bottom left block and we're going to branch out by eight blocks so two three four five six seven and eight and then put another block right here and we need a layer of leaves going all the way across the build until you're lined up with this final observer right here and now we just are going to box this in. So it's basically going to be like a giant 3x3 three three of leaves. And we just need to put layers all the way around this thing. And this needs to be three blocks tall. So now we got a big old trough right here. And we're going to put some dividers between these. So just three blocks up every other block. And these little holes for the villagers should be lined up with your observers. And now we're going to go ahead and punch out these two blocks right here for every cell. That way we can easily get our villagers in there. And once we have all those punched out, we're going to put a piece of ice into each one of these cells. And you can break that with a non-soak touch tool or just let it melt naturally from some torches and that's going to give us a water source in each hole for the villager to sit in and you probably guessed it but we need another two just like this right on top of it so your bottom line of leaves is going to go right here and then you start building up another little cube and another one on top of that for three layers and this is what it should look like once you have it all done and ready to go. Make sure to remove your little counter blocks down here at the bottom. And we're going to come back to this once we actually have the villagers in place. Final touches for the AFK area. Make sure you put some leaf blocks on top of all this stuff right here. And put some minecarts into your dispenser. Going down below, we're going to pillar down by 11 slime blocks. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. And then the 12th one is going to be a redstone block. You want a fill block another sticky piston two slime blocks and then a redstone block and we're gonna hook it into this redstone line right here so bring this all the way across until it reaches up to this point cover that thing in redstone and put a whole bunch of leaves above all of it like so and whenever you turn on the farm this piston is going to extend and turn on your trident killers to start the kill chamber we're going to make a bridge at the same layer as the bottom floor of our outpost basically our common layer and we're going to bring this all the way out to the three chunks that we marked out for the kill chamber earlier so we're going to build ourselves a pillar at the left of center so mark out the center of this chunk and we're going to going to be pillaring up on the left side of that center so this block right here is block number one and then two going all the way up we need to go up to 58 so this block right here is block number 58 and this would be block number 59 we're going to continue going in this direction by another 17 blocks or 18 in total so two three four 
all the way out to 18. This line of blocks is going to be the very center of our kill platform, so keep that in mind. I would also recommend double checking your chunk borders. This should be right on the very front edge of the chunk border, and this should have two blocks going beyond this chunk border on the back side. So now we're going to bridge to the left and to the right by an additional 17 blocks. So 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way out to 17, and then on this side, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way out to 17. And now we need to go ahead and fill in that entire platform with solid blocks. So you can go ahead and finish making yourself the outline of this platform and then just completely fill it in with solid blocks. If that wasn't enough block placing for you, I have even more blocks for you to place. So we're going to start off on this side over here and make ourselves a too thick wall going all the way around this thing. So basically, we need to make this extra thick. That way, none of the raiders glitch through it and fall down. So it's going to be two blocks thick on these two layers right here going all the way around. And it's also going to be three blocks tall as well. And this is what the wall should look like. So now you need to cover up all of this with leaves. The walls also need to be extended out by two blocks on either side side so just two blocks out like this and then of course cover that with leaves and do that on that side as well and now we're going to add a layer of leaves at the front of this build just going all the way across to the other side and then we're going to go to the back of this and place in a line of water all the way across just to push all the mobs towards the front of the farm and now we need to install the secondary water stream so we're going to place in a line of buttons at this layer right here it can be any kind of button that you want and then we're going to get a bunch of signs and place them going all the way across now that those are in place, grab yourself a line of temporary blocks and bring that all the way across the build just so that we have something to place the water on and then just make yourself a whole bunch of infinite water sources in this area. It should be water sources going all the way across. Once you have that done, we're going to break these blocks. Make sure it flows to the edge and not over. If it doesn't flow over, then you've built it correctly. And now we can break down this entire barrier. And now we're going to place in two lines of blocks. So we're going to place in a line of blocks at the above head height right here and one at head height right here and bring these going all the way across the farm. And that's basically what it should look like. We're also going to add in another additional line of blocks going all the way across right here. And now we're going to add some horizontal bars going across this entire area to keep the ravagers from bouncing up and down too much because that can cause some issues so basically every other block we're gonna have a line of glass blocks that goes all the way to the front of the build and yeah just do that every other block this of course needs to have a layer of leaves on top of it as well so do that going all the way across the build and that's pretty much what it should look like so now we're gonna add in an additional line of leaves right above this line of blocks now we're gonna go on the inside of the build and go to the left side of this platform and we're just gonna pop a hole right here in the wall for a tripwire hook and then just run a line of string going all the way across the build. This will detect whenever you have something in the kill chamber that needs to be killed. Pop a hole right here and put a tripwire hook right there as well. And now for the biggest trotting killer in history, come over to this edge over here and place in a whole line of pistons facing forwards like so. And we need a line of blocks behind these as well. So put a block right there and then run this all the way across this entire thing. A block up on the end. And then we need a block up in the middle right here as well. And then you want redstone dust on top of all of these to either side. And now for the circuitry. Come out with three blocks in these locations like so. And then go over by five blocks. And then you want three additional blocks right here for that general shape. Go ahead and place in yourself a comparator on subtract mode. A block right there. And then redstone dust in all of these areas. You want a repeater right here on one tick. And a repeater right here on one tick as well. And then all of this needs to be covered up in leaves. So all the pistons need to be covered up in leaves. All of the redstone dust needs to be covered up in leaves. And then all of this circuitry over here needs to be covered in leaves as well. And now go to the right side over here. And we're going to pop out this block right here. There is our tripwire hook. So we want a redstone torch right there. And now we can put that block back. We're going to bring out a line of blocks from that redstone torch until we're lined up with the comparator. And then bring this out until you reach the comparator. And we want ourselves a solid block right here. Redstone torch right there. That should start activating all of your pistons. And then we're just going to run a redstone line until we hit this redstone torch over here. Cover up all of this redstone with a line of leaves, of course. And now it's time for the item and experience collection. This is really easy. It's just going to be a big water stream that pushes straight to the middle. So going to the left side, we're going to place in seven leaf blocks right here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Go down a block and then we want eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we're going to do that same thing on the opposite side as well. So 
One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, go down, and then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and that should line up in the middle nice and cleanly. Then we're gonna fill in this back wall with some leaf blocks or some solid blocks right there. And on the front wall, we're gonna fill this in with a glass because it's very nice to be able to see all of the raiders dying to the trident killers. So yeah, basically just fill in this entire thing with some glass blocks going all the way across. And it should look a little bit something like that. And now you just need to go onto the inside of the farm and go to this right corner and place in a water source right there. Be careful not to place it on the string and then place in one water source on the left side over here. And that's going to flow nice and cleanly to the center. So any items or experience from inside of there is going to flow straight down to here. And now you can go ahead and remove this pillar of temporary blocks that we used earlier. But you might be able to use that to place in this column of leaves. Basically, we're just going to place in a nice column of leaves going all the way down to the ground layer. And basically, this is just a hollow tube in a plus shape just to keep all the items like in place as they're falling all the way down. You could build this out of glass or your solid blocks, really whatever you want. And now it's time for the workstation placement. So we have ourselves a bridge of blocks at the same exact layer as the very bottom of our pillager outpost, a pretty standard. We're going to bring this all the way to the very final chunk that we marked out and go over over to the corner of that chunk. We then need to count up by 41 blocks. Once you get to the top, this right here is gonna be block number 41, and I'd recommend double checking your chunk borders again. You should be right on the very corner of the final chunk that you marked out down below. So now we're gonna to go to the left of this, and we're gonna have ourselves a marker block right here, a filler block, and then just repeat that going every other block until you reach the end of this chunk, and that should be eight marker blocks in total. And as you can see, that is eight marker blocks. So our workstations are going to be going right on top of these marker blocks. And then we're going to have leaves on top of them. But that'll come much later in the build. For right now, we're going to pillar up by three blocks right here. And then repeat this process of the bar down below. So your marker blocks and then your filler blocks. And then we want to do that again. Go up by three blocks, marker block, filler block. And of course, extend these going all the way across. And this is what it should look like once it's all done. That is basically the entire structure of the raid farm done now we're going to install all of the scaffolding around the area in order to move the villagers around and actually stack the villagers we're going to start at the villager pods right here and we're basically going to make ourselves a big platform that is three blocks deep at the same layer as our water and we're going to have ourselves a marker block directly in front of the water right here and the middle of the platform this is where the pillow of the bed is going to be going so keep that in mind for later now now that all three of the platforms are in place, you go to the bottom right corner and we're going to make a two wide bridge that is four blocks long. Go up and build yourself a two by two and then another two by two and one more two by two right here. Go ahead and put four more blocks on top of that and then bridge that all the way back to this middle platform and then basically build that same style of ramp for the top platform as well. Now that all of this is in place, we're going to go to this right corner right here and build a two wide bridge that goes outwards by 23 blocks. So this is one, two, three, four, and all the way to 23. And you should have something that looks like this. And now we're going to make our platform where we actually get our villagers in. So we need to build a two wide bridge right here that goes out by 107 blocks in this direction. So this is one, two, three, and all the way to 107. And as you can see, that is now a very, very long bridge. And at the end of this bridge, we're just going to extend this platform just a little bit so that you have a little bit of room to stand on and work with. Now we need to build another Another long bridge going all the way out until we are lined up with those workstation marker blocks over there. So basically just build this bridge two blocks wide going all the way out there. And that is our very long bridge in place and you should be lined up with the workstations right here. As you can see we're perfectly in line with it on this block. We're going to go past the workstation lines by three blocks and then we're just going to build ourselves another two wide bridge going out until we reach you know this layer over here basically. So once you are over here you need yourself a three wide platform just to get yourself in place with all the villagers and that way they don't fall off or anything and of course extend this going back so that the actual bridge is too wide and this is more or less what it should look like once you have that in place now we also need to build a platform at the bottom layer that is three blocks deep that goes all the way across and a similar platform at the top as well and now we're going to go down to the bottom right platform and we're going to build up ourselves a four long bridge right here and then a two by two of blocks and another two by two of blocks 
blocks and another 2x2 two two of blocks until we reach the middle platform and then do the same thing for the top platform. So that is all the bridges and villager scaffolding in place. I would highly recommend putting just a ton of torches on this thing because we're going to be moving villagers at nighttime and you don't want to fight mobs. Now go to the very end of your very long bridge and we're going to build a nether portal right here. This is where we're going to be getting all of our villagers from. Do not build a villager breeder anywhere in this area. I'd recommend building a villager breeder a couple hundred blocks in that direction and then sending all of the baby villagers to the nether. And once you have a stockpile of about 50 villagers in the nether, you can transport them to this side of the nether portal. So on the other side of this portal would be your big stockpile of villagers. It's important that all the villagers are adults, that none of them are nitwits, and that they are not linked to any beds or workstations. They basically need to be clean, fresh, and generic villagers. We're going to be sending through two villagers at a time and walking those villagers along this very long bridge. And that is how we're going to be stacking our villages. We're going to be installing the villages in a specific manner. So the top left over here is village number one and then two, three, four, so on until we reach village number eight at the end. This one is going to be village nine, 10, 11, 12 until the end. And this one is going to be village 17, 18, 19. And village number 24 is going to be this one at the end right here. So basically we're going to be modifying this bridge. You'll use the top part of it to feed the top part and then remove parts of this to fill in the middle and then remove a little bit of this right here to fill in the bottom part of the villages and it's the same process for the workstations over there and now it is time for village stacking this is a pretty straightforward process but make sure that you are doing it absolutely correctly and maybe watch this part of the video a couple of times just to make sure that you got it down now i would recommend starting this process right after sunset happens because you need the villagers to sleep in a bed and follow the bed and if you do this during the day it's just not gonna have work so do it at nighttime, make sure no one skips the night. The first thing we're gonna do is place down two beds right here on this platform. These could be color coded to the color of wool that you're working on at the moment. Now we're gonna bring through two villagers from our nether portal. They should immediately link to these beds and sleep in them rather quickly as well. And now they're sleeping, we're gonna place down ourselves a bell. Both of them should link to that bell. And once we break this, one of them is gonna have the storm cloud particles. That was the one on the right. So this is now the village leader. We're going to go ahead and place down a bed about 15 blocks away. Break this guy's bed. That should get green particles. There you go. And now we can place down our next bed about 15 blocks away. Break this one. And essentially, we're just going to be like inchworming this thing along the way. As soon as you get green particles, you can place down the next bed and go back to break the original. You don't need to wait for them to sleep in the bed. As long as it's got green particles, then you are good to go. As you can see, that guy's got the green particles. We can now go ahead and place down the next bed over there. Break this one. And it only takes a couple minutes to inchworm this village towards the center. So just keep on inchworming them until you get them to this cross section right here. And now we're going to place down a workstation. And this guy right here is the first villager to link to it, which is good. Now we're going to start inchworming these beds towards the bottom of that staircase. Once you have them to the base of the stairs, you might need to move them up or down these stairs, depending on what level you're working on. But basically, you need to get them relatively close to the location of the final bed. So the final bed's going to be going right here for village number one. So we're going to get both of our villagers up into this area. Both of our villagers are now right here. So now we need to place down a workstation. And the first villager that links to it, this guy, is actually the villager that we're going to walk all the way over to that direction. So this guy does not link link to the workstation, meaning that we're going to place down the final bed for this village right here in the appropriate location, break his bed, and he should link right to that. Now, this villager is going to go sleep in this bed, and once he does that, you simply get yourself some leaves, click on this guy, and he's going to go right into this area, nudge him into the water, and then block him in with a wall right there, wait for him to bob down, and then place in a leaf directly above him, like so. That is now our first village properly in place. We're going to break out this leaf right Right here simply so that he can see the bed now this villager we're going to walk all the way to the end over there and install our final workstation so to walk this guy towards the other end without destroying this part of the village we're going to place down a workstation and he's going to link to that as you can see with the green particles now put down a secondary bed for him break his bed and wait for him to come over here and sleep in it and then once he's done that you can simply move this workstation you know another 15 or so blocks he's going to link to that 
There we go. And then you place in a secondary bed. And this is how we're going to walk this villager along. You extend the village by placing in the workstation. And then you move him towards that extended village by using the bed. It's fairly straightforward. And it's honestly a pretty clever way of doing this. So now what you need to do is you need to walk this villager all the way down until we get to the staircase of the workstation area. So yep, this is super easy. You break the workstation, you place it down 15 or so blocks away. He links it to that and then you put a bed next to it. And then you go ahead and break this bed and just repeat that process. Make sure the villager has actually linked to the workstation and or bed before breaking either of these. If for some reason your villager doesn't link to a workstation or a bed, it might be because it's too far away. So try moving it closer to the villager. So basically what this process is doing is it's extending the village. So the village is now from all the way over there where our original villager is all the way over to here. And this is going to force our raiders to spawn where we want them, which is on that killing platform. So once we have this guy here, we can move him into the proper location. And we're going to just basically get him towards where we need the workstation to be. Our first workstation is going to be going right there. Our villager is now directly in front of the place where the workstation needs to be. And this workstation is linked to this villager, as you can see. If you place down a secondary workstation, that is going to link to the villager that we have in the containment area of over there you should see some green particles on that and yes you do it's kind of crazy but that villager that is not even in loaded chunks is actually linking to this workstation so go all the way over here to the villager that is in your cube and you should see that this guy is now a fletcher and yes he is perfection we're gonna cover up this bed with a couple of leaves to signify that that's done and now we're gonna go back over to here now that we're over here cover up this workstation with a leaf to signify that that one is done and we're also going to be breaking this workstation breaking this bed and then killing this villager so the villager that is way over there is still linked to this workstation meaning that we have one very large village that stretches all the way from that villager to that workstation and the raiders are all going to be spawning in this platform right here exactly where we want them so the final step to do is to make sure that this guy is still a fletcher and yes he is we're now going to place down a bell on the observer that that is, you know, linked to the sky. So this one is directly behind that villager. Place in a bell right there, and that should link to the villager. You're gonna see some green particles on that. There we go. This guy also has green particles, and that is our first village properly stacked. We now need to do this a lot more times however many villages you want in your raid farm that is how many times you need to stack this it is going to take you several nights to do this because you can't do them that quickly but with some diligence and some perseverance i think you can get this done in a reasonable amount of time and keep in mind that you do not need to build 24 of these you can have four you can have eight you can have 10 you can have however many you want and that's pretty much all there is to the village stacking you can stack as many villages as you want and you can do them at any time that you want so you can take breaks between it i would just recommend that once you start stacking a village you complete it and don't leave it like halfway done or something so that is it go ahead and stack as many as you want for your raid farm now that the first village is in place stacking the other villages is going to be slightly tedious because you're going to be fighting with this village over here and the bounding box of this village so the beds and workstations might need to be placed close Closer to the villagers than you're used to. You might need to step them in smaller increments than you are used to. So again, re-watch this part of the stacking tutorial. That way you know how to do everything and make sure that you're not breaking beds or workstations when you shouldn't. Otherwise, that could mess up the entire linking process. So I've now stacked in two villages and if you feel like it, you can actually check this to make sure that you have two independent villages. What you would do for this is make a creative copy of your world and then you simply stand over here in this area, stand behind the black wool right here and give yourself the bad omen effect while in hard difficulties so if we give ourselves bad omen that is going to start activating this trapdoor and then if we step over to the purple one and give ourselves bad omen over here that is going to activate this trapdoor at a different time from that one and that is how you know you have two independent villages 
And also, like, you'll see two raids spawn somewhere in the area. Obviously, like, this stuff is not spawn-proof at all, so they're gonna be spawning all over the place. So, obviously, do not do this in survival mode. This is only for testing to make sure that your villages are properly stacking on a creative copy. Once you're done stacking all of your villages, go ahead and remove all of these scaffolding and bridges. That includes the marker blocks underneath the beds. Basically, all of this stuff that I've built out of iron blocks should all be removed, going all the way over there even. And this is basically what the completed farm should look like. As you can see, there's no scaffolding or bridges over here. There's no bridges going out over here. And all the workstations are more or less floating over here. You don't really need much over here. Just make sure that you never break these workstations. The final step before we actually try to turn on the farm is leveling this entire area. You do not need to spawn proof anything, but you do need to flatten it. That way, all of this ground layer is out of range of the raid farm and nothing can spawn on it so basically we are just a couple blocks down below the final layer of our outpost you just want to dig it down additional two layers and anything that you have built down here could possibly have raids spawning on it so like even this one dirt block that could cause us some issues all of our chunk border markers these should be made out of leaves if they're not then either cover them up with leaves or remove them entirely and basically you need to spawn proof like 50 blocks in every direction from your chunk border marker as you can see, this entire area is basically flattened. So that is why you should choose a pillager outpost that is already in a flat area. This is a 24 stacked raid farm. You want to make sure that they all spawn in the kill chamber. Seriously, don't mess around with this. Take the time, flatten out the area, maybe get a beacon. Basically, the final thing that you need to do is figure out how you're going to deal with all of your items and experience. So for me, I just drop them down to the ground layer, and then I have myself a little bit of an ice stream going across right here. All of this stuff is covered up with leaves, that way nothing can spawn on it. And then our actual storage system is going to be down below the ground layer, that way you don't need to spawn proof it. As you can see, I'm being a little bit cautious over here with some leaves, but you don't technically need these. So basically what I have set up is a series of hopper mine carts underneath the ice stream, and then those are going down into droppers, and those are facing into some stairs like this, and then we're reading out of those droppers with some comparators and repeaters. So anytime a couple of items goes through there, that is going to activate this comparator clock, and I have this split into a number of different item streams, so each dropper goes into its own item stream. Right now, I do not have a good sorting system to show you guys for this, but I do have some resources in the description down below where you might be able to hodgepodge together your own sorting system. So all the items will go down into there, and then the experience is going to flow across, and basically I just have a water stream that goes all the way over into a bubble column. This gets sent straight up, and then this goes to the AFK platform. If you're having some weird lag issues, and this area is getting progressively laggy, over time that is probably because you have a massive buildup of items somewhere because items get very laggy they are entities or it is the experience orbs so what you would want to do for that is basically just send all of your experience into fire and that might honestly be the best thing to do just simply burn it because it is so buggy right now that it might be very difficult to actually collect without it getting stuck somewhere for no good reason and for the final final step we need to go ahead and throw an impaling five trident into each one of these trident killers and then cover that up with a leaf block for all four of these at our pillager outpost and then we need to do the same thing up at the raid farm killing platform so basically each one of these pistons needs to have a trident in front of it and yes that is a 31 impaling five tridents they do not need to be full durability they do not need to have unbreaking or mending they cannot break they cannot despawn so so literally any trident that has impaling five on it will do and this is why you're going to want a drown farm to build this once you get to the end of it you should have just a whole row of very shiny tridents and just break one of these pieces of redstone and that is going to activate the 31 trident killer as you can tell it is very noisy if you put that back we can now cover up this entire area with some different leaf blocks that way in case you ever need to get back in here you know where your tridents are supposed to go if you ever fall in here you can technically pick up the tridents through this corner so be aware of that you might accidentally pick up some tridents if you fall in there 
once you're confident that everything is built exactly as shown, I would still recommend triple checking it and maybe rewatching the entire tutorial just to make sure, because you really don't want this thing to break and that would be a sad time indeed. So once you are absolutely, absolutely sure, go ahead and hold yourself a looting three sword, flick the lever and hop into the minecart. That should send you to the first trap door. And now you just need to wait to get some bad omen. And it should only take a few seconds to get your first bad omen and that is gonna start a raid. And of course, of course, all of the obnoxious bell sounds and raid horns are going to commence. Of course, there's nothing stopping you from taking a look around either, and we should be able to take a look at that up there and see our raiders spawning in. You can see them turning red from the trident killers and dying, and all the items are going into the item stream as well. As you can see, we're getting quite a bit of bad omen, so all you need to do is just keep on riding this minecart, and that will start a raid in every single village. And now I've started a raid in all the villages, so it's just gonna loop me back around to the start and continue the roller coaster. And now you can really start to see all of the pillagers lining up up there and getting completely wrecked by those trident killers. If we take a look at the loot down here, you can see that all the items are traveling across all of our minecarts and getting shot out into the five different water streams. Currently, I'm just burning the items, but of course, you're going to want to be sorting these out. I would highly recommend that you turn off these trident killers before you leave the area or unload the chunks or log out of the game. And I would also highly recommend that you let all of the mobs up there die before logging out or leaving the area as well. If you leave the area while these trident killers are on, there is a small chance that one of the tridents could fall down as you can see here so keep an eye out for these and as you can see we have an absolute ton of pillagers spawning up here and they're just getting wrecked by these trident killers if you have any questions comments or concerns then of course let me know in the comment section down below also definitely check out the world downloads and show some love to pico nico for designing this amazing raid farm if you enjoyed today's video then drop the biggest like you ever have and definitely subscribe for more mega tutorials in the future thank you ever so much for watching i'll See you guys down in the comment section and in the next one. And then there was silence.